Welcome to Wanda. March Hare took the watch and looked at it gloomily. Then he dipped it into his cup of tea and looked at it again. But he could think of nothing better to say than his first remark. It was the best butter, you know. Alice had been looking over his shoulder with some curiosity. What a funny watch, she remarked. It tells the day of the month and doesn't tell what o'clock it is. Why should it? muttered the Hatter. Does your watch tell you what year it is? Of course not, Alice replied very readily. But that's because it stays the same year for such a long time together. Which is just the case with mine, said the Hatter. Alice felt dreadfully puzzled. The Hatter's remark seemed to have no sort of meaning in it, and yet it was certainly English. I don't quite understand you, she said, as politely as she could. The Dormouse is asleep again, said the Hatter, and he poured a little hot tea upon its nose. The Dormouse shook its head impatiently and said, without opening its eyes, Of course, of course, just what I was going to remark myself. Have you guessed the riddle yet? the Hatter said, turning to Alice again. No, I give it up, Alice replied. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea said the Hatter. Nor I, said the March Hare. Alice sighed wearily. I think you might do something better with the time, she said, than waste it in asking riddles that have no answers. If you knew time as well as I do, said the Hatter, you wouldn't talk about wasting it. It's him. I don't know what you mean, said Alice. Of course you don't, the Hatter said tossing his head contemptuously. I dare say you never even spoke to time. Perhaps not, Alice cautiously replied. But I know I have to beat time when I learn music. Ah, that accounts for it, said the Hatter. He won't stand beating. Now, if you only kept on good terms with him, he'd do almost anything you liked with the clock. For instance, suppose it were nine o'clock in the morning, just time to begin lessons. You'd only have to whisper a hint to time. Round goes the clock in a twinkling. Half past one, time for dinner. Oh, I only wish it was, the March Hare said to himself in a whisper. That would be grand, certainly, said Alice thoughtfully. But then, I shouldn't be hungry for it, you know. Not at first, perhaps, said the Hatter. But you could keep it to half past one as long as you liked. Is that the way you manage? Alice asked. The Hatter shook his head mournfully. Not I, he replied. We quarrelled last March, just before he went mad, you know, pointing with his teaspoon at the March Hare. It was at the great concert given by the Queen of Hearts, and I had to sing. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder what you're at. It goes on, you know, the Hatter continued, in this way. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. Here the Dormouse shook itself and began singing in its sleep. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. And went on so long that they had to pinch it to make it stop. But what happens when you come to the beginning again? Alice ventured to ask. Suppose we change the subject, the March Hare interrupted, yawning. I'm getting tired of this. I felt the young lady tells us a story. I'm afraid I don't know what, said Alice. Let's make our shared humanity part of the cure in this difficult time.